श्री साई सचरित्रा चैप्टर थ्री साई बाबा सैंक्शन एंड प्रॉमिस असाइनमेंट ऑफ वर्क टू डिवोटीज बाबा स्टोरीज एस बी ऑकन लाइट हिज मदरली लव रोहिला स्टोरी हिज स्वीट एंड नेक्टर लाइक वर्ड्स साई बाबा सैंक्शन एंड प्रॉमिस एज डिस्क्राइब इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर साई बाबा गेव हिज कंप्लीट एसन टू द राइटिंग ऑफ द सचरिता एंड सेड आई फुली एग्री विथ यू रिगार्डिंग द राइटिंग ऑफ सचरिता You do your duty don't be afraid in the least steady your mind and have faith in my words if my leelas are written the avidya nasains will vanish and if they are attentively and devotedly listened to the consciousness of the worldly existence will abate and strong waves of devotion and love will rise up and if one dives deep into my leelas he would get precious jewels of knowledge Hearing this the author was much pleased and he at once became fearless and confident and thought that the work was bound to be a success then turning to shama madhav rao desh pande sai baba said if a man utters my name with love i shall fulfill all his wishes increase his devotion and if he sings earnestly my life and my deeds him i shall beset in front and back and on all sides those devotees who are attached to me heart and soul will naturally feel happiness when they hear these stories believe me that if anybody sings my leelas i will give him infinite joy and everlasting contentment it is my special characteristic to free any person who surrenders completely to me and who worships me faithfully and who remembers me and meditates on me constantly how can they be conscious of worldly objects and sensations who utter my name who worship me who thinks of my stories and my life and who thus always remember me i shall draw out my devotees from the jaws of death if my stories are listened to all the diseases will be got rid of so hear my stories with respect and think and meditate on them assimilate them this is the way of happiness and contentment the pride and egoism of my devotees will vanish the mind of the heroes will be set at rest and if he has wholehearted and complete faith he will be one with supreme consciousness the simple remembrance of my name as sai sai will do away with sense of speech and hearing different works assigned to devotees the lord entrusts different works to different devotees some are given the work of building temples and mats or ghats flight of steps on rivers some are made to sing the glories of god some are sent on pilgrimages but to me was allotted the work of writing the sai satcharita being a jack of all trades but master of none i was quite unqualified for this job then why should i undertake such a difficult task who can describe the true life of sai baba sai baba's grace alone can enable one to accomplish this difficult work So when I took the pen in my hand Sai Baba took away my egoism and himself wrote his stories The credit of relating these stories therefore goes to him and not to me Though Brahman by birth I lack the two eyes that is the sight or vision of Shruti and Smriti and therefore was not at all capable of writing the Satcharita but the grace of the Lord makes a dumb man talk enables a lame man to cross a mountain He alone knows the ways of getting things done as he likes. Neither the flute nor the harmonium knows how the sounds are produced. This is the concern of the player. The oozing of Chandrakant jewel and the surging of the sea are not due to the jewel and the sea but due to the rising of the moon. Baba's stories as beacon light. Lighthouses are constructed at various places in the sea to enable the boatmen to avoid rocks and dangers. and make them sail safely sai baba stories serve a similar purpose in the ocean of worldly existence they surpass nectar in sweetness and make our worldly path smooth and easy to traverse blessed are the stories of the saints when they enter our hearts through the years the body consciousness or egoism and the sense of duality vanish and when they are stored in the heart doubts will evade pride of the body will fall and wisdom will be stored in abundance The description of Baba's pure fame and the hearing of the same with love will destroy the sins of the devotee and therefore this is a simple sadhana for attaining salvation. The sadhana for Krita age was samadhama tranquility of mind and body 
for Tratha age, sacrifice, for Dwapar worship and for Kali, present age, it is singing of the name and glory of the Lord. This last sadhana is open to all the people of the four Varnas, Brahmins, etc. The other sadhanas with Yoga, Tyaga, Sacrifice, Dhyan, Meditation and Dhyan Dharana, Concentration are very difficult to practice but singing and hearing the stories and the glory of the Lord, Sai Baba, is very easy. We have only to turn our attention towards them. The listening to and singing of the stories will remove the attachment to the senses and their objects and will make the devotees dispassionate and will ultimately lead them to self-realization. With this end in view, Sai Baba made me write his stories as Sat Charita. The devotees may now easily read and hear these stories of Sai Baba and while doing so meditate on him, his form and thus attain devotion to Guru and God Sai Baba get dispassion and self-realization. In the preparation and writing of this work, Sat Charita, it is Sai Baba's grace which has accomplished everything, making use of me as a mere instrument. Motherly Love of Sai Baba Everybody knows how a cow loves an infant calf. Her udder is always full when the calf wants milk and dashes at the udder out comes the milk in an unceasing flow. Similarly, a human mother knows the wants of her child beforehand and feeds him at her breast in time. In case of dressing and adorning the child, the mother takes particular care to see that this is well done. The child knows or cares nothing about this, but the mother's joy knows no bounds when she sees a child well dressed and adorned. The love of the mother is peculiar, extraordinary and disinterested and has no parallel. Sadhgurus feel this motherly love towards their disciples. Sai Baba had the same love towards me and I gave an instance of it below. In 1916, I retired from government service. The pension that was settled in my case was not sufficient to maintain my family decently. On Guru Purnima, 15th of Ashada, day of that year, I went to Shirdi with other devotees. There, Mr. Anna Chinchanikar of his own accord, Pray to Baba for me as follows. Please look kindly at him. The pension he gets is quite insufficient. His family is growing. Give him some other appointment. Remove his anxiety and make him happy. Baba replied, He will get some other job. But now he should serve me and be happy. His plates will be ever full and never empty. He should turn all his attention towards me and avoid the company of atheists, irreligious and wicked people. He should be modest and humble towards all and worship me with heart and soul. If he does this, he will get eternal happiness. The question, who is this he whose worship is advocated is already answered in a note on who is Sai Baba in the prologue at the beginning of this work. Rohila's Story the story of the Rohila illustrates Sai Baba's all-embracing love. One Rohila, tall and well-built, strong as a bull, came to Shirdi, wearing a long kafni robe and was enamored of the Sai who stayed there. Day and night he used to recite in a loud and harsh tone of the Kalma verses from Holy Quran and shout, Allahu Akbar, God is great. Most people of Shirdi were working in their fields during the day and when they returned to their homes at night, they were welcomed with Rohila's harsh cries and shouts. They could get no sleep and felt much trouble and inconvenience. They suffered this nuisance for some days in silence and when they could stand it no longer, they approached Baba and requested him to check the Rohila and stop the nuisance. Baba did not attend to their complaint. On the contrary, Baba took the villagers to task and asked them to mind their own business. He said to them that the Rohila had got a very bad wife who tried to trouble the Rohila and himself. But hearing the Rohila's prayers, she dare not enter and they were at peace. In fact, the Rohila had no wife and by his wife, Baba meant Durbuddhi, that is, evil thoughts. As Baba liked prayers and cries to God better than anything else, he took the side of the Rohila and asked the villagers to wait and bear with the nuisance which would abate in due course. Baba's sweet and nectar-like words One day at noon after Aarti, devotees were returning to their lodgings when Baba gave the following beautiful advice. 
be wherever you like do whatever you choose remember this well that all what you do is known to me i am the inner ruler of all and seated in your hearts i envelop all the creatures the movable and immovable world i am the controller the wire puller of the show of this universe i am the mother origin of all beings the harmony of three gunas the propeller of all senses the creator preserver and destroyer nothing will harm him who turns his attention towards me but maya will lash or whip him who forgets me all the insects and the visible movable and immovable world is my body or form hearing these beautiful and precious words i at once decided in my mind to serve no man henceforth but my guru only but the reply of baba to anna chinan chanikar square which was really mine that i would get some job began to revolve in my mind and i began to think whether it would come to happen as future events showed baba's words came true and i got a government job but that was of short duration then i became free and devoted myself solely to the service of my guru sai baba before concluding this chapter i request the readers to leave out the various hindrances viz indolence sleep wandering of mind attachments to senses etc and turn their whole and undivided attention to these stories of sai baba let their love be natural let them know the secret of devotion let them not exhaust themselves by other sadhanas let them stick to the simple remedy that is listening to sai baba's stories this will destroy their ignorance and will secure for them salvation a miser may stay at various places but he constantly thinks of his buried treasure so let sai baba be enthroned in the hearts of all in the next chapter i shall speak of sai baba's advent in shirdi bo to shri sai peace be to all